every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there and welcome to Call TV News on the hour with me, Sabena Izuku. One of the leading governorship aspirants of the People's Democratic Party uh, in River State, Tony Prince Will, has now opted for the Labour Party. He has also been offered the party's governorship ticket. Prince Will said in a statement made available to newsmen that he chose Labour Party instead of quitting politics. The former PDP member explained that he feels at home with social democratic ideology and the detailed manifesto of Labour Party because of the policies are not different from his position. He also urged aggrieved politicians from the two leading parties in River State to consider teaming up with Labour Party. Former Minister of State for Niger Delta, Darius Ishaku, is the governorship candidate on the People's Democratic Party in Taraba State. This was after emerging victorious at the governorship primaries held on Thursday night at the PDP National Secretariat, Abuja. Former Acting Governor Ngaba Umar and another aspirant, Musa John had been prevailed to step down after the PDP leaders in the state drew the attention of the national leadership to an agreement signed in 2011 that Taraba's South Senatorial District would produce the governorship candidate in 2015. Taraba North and Central had produced the state governor since 1999. After failing to agree on the governorship, candidate leaders of the People's Democratic Party in Bondu State have settled for Gambo Lawa after a meeting at the presidential villa in Abuja. The meeting, which attracted all the major players of the party in the state, was at the instance of President Goodluck Jonathan. Speaking after the meeting, one-time Minister of National Planning, Senator Sanusi Dagash, told State House correspondent that the decision to adopt consensus was based on the security challenges in the state. Uh, fair when it comes to us resolving issues. So this meeting essentially was to resolve issues within the family. As you know, politics, everybody has his interests, there are various power groups. The locus of uh, decision making is here in the villa. And on behalf of our people in Borno, we came to consult the president, the vice president, board of trustees, chairman of the National Assembly, the National Party chairman, uh, Alaji Ahmed Adam Azu, and uh, we have just finished with him. Uh, we have zeroed on uh, Alaji Gambolawan as the candidate for the PDP. Uh, uh, former chairman of the GDM and is also has had his uh, a long track record which some of you know and he will effectively been accepted as the consensus candidate for the PDP elections 2015. The Kwara State PDP in governorship primaries, which was marred with violence and accusations of fraud, has been reconducted. The National Assembly, Simon Sule Ajibola, clinched the party ticket ahead of uh, favorites, Mimi Saraki and Dele Begori. Correspondent Rashid Rashid was there and filed in this report. <laughs> The rescheduled governorship primary started late in the night, while voting commenced around 2 a.m. It was, however, a keen competition between the aspirants, where the senator representing Kwara South Senatorial District, Simeon Ajibola, emerged the winner. By the voting in the Kwara primaries of Kwara State, I, Governor Gabriel Suswam, hereby announce Senator Simeon S. Ajibola who, having scored the highest score of 144, has become a clear winner in the Kuba primaries conducted here this morning. The label Gore and Baby Sarakil polled 132 and 113 votes, respectively. 
The election, according to Simeon Ajibola, is victory to all. Some contestants also say Ajibola's governorship bid is the project of the entire party. All the other contestants that in this exercise, there's no need to have no violence. We have to remain calm. We have to remain calm. I look up to the party to support uh, the candidates to be able to win an election. Because uh, in this matter, when we don't have a ruling party in the state, funding a campaign will be the essential burden of uh, the, the party. Owing to the boxing expertise exhibited by delegates in the botched Congress, Governor of Benue State Gabriel Suswan says the transparent process of the primaries is a signal that something good is coming from the PDP. You can see that it is highly transparent and the person who scored the highest is being declared the winner. And so, uh, for the Dapton Thomases, something good has come out of Quara PDP. At least primaries have been conducted transparently. There is no person protesting here because every person has accepted the outcome. With the emergence of Ajibola as the yes. the People's Democratic Party in Quara State, so the stage is now I'll set make a form and the die is now the cast as he will slug it out with Abdel Fattah Ahmed in the 2015 election. And how this is going to play out in the election, the game begins now. Rashid Rashid, 40 TV News, Ilori. Former Minister of State for Defence Musini Obani Koro has gone to court to seek redress over his loss at the recent governorship primaries of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos. Obani Koro revealed through his Twitter handle that he has taken his case to the Federal High Court in Abuja after he did not receive a response to his appeal from the PDP National Secretariat. According to him, 48 hour timeline set out by the party in its electoral guideline has elapsed and had no choice but to challenge the outcome of the primaries in court. No date has been fixed for the hearing. Away from that, the Federal High Court has fixed January 19, 2015 for hearing in the suit filed by the People's Democratic Party, seeking to unseat the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambawa. The case was due for hearing on Friday, but respondents were not served the court processes on time. Justice Ahmed Mohammed adjourned the matter after listening to submissions from Tambawa's counsel, Mahmoud Magaji, and that of the House of Representatives, Jubi Kutekma, who said they needed time to respond to the court papers. They claimed to have only received the processes from PDP lawyer Mike Ahamba on December 9th. A court clerk also informed the judge that the clerk of the House of Representatives was served on December 4th. Justice Mohammed thereafter adjourned the case until January 19th for the clerk to transmit the court services to Tambowa and Deputy Speaker Emeka Eheryoha. The People's Democratic Party has suffered a setback in its bid to unseat governors that decamp to the All Progressive Congress (APC). A federal high court in Abuja yesterday party struck out the suit filed by the party with which it was seeking to sack the four governors who defected from the party. Justice Gabriel Kolawole, in a ruling that lasted about two hours, held that the suits originating processes were not valid on the ground that they were wrongly issued and served under the defendants. The PDP had last December sued the five governors, including a former Adamawa State Governor Morita Yanko and the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, asking the court to declare the defecting governor's seat vacant and for INEC to conduct elections for the replacement. Yanko's name was removed from the suit shortly after his impeachment. The remaining four from uh, are Rotimi Amechi of River State, Aliyu Wamako of Sokoto State, Rabiu Kokwanso of Kano State, and Aldo Fatai Ahmed of Kwara State. The party had upon an order of the court served the originating process on a wrong address, which it claimed was the headquarters of the IPC. The service was faulted by the defendants, forcing the courts to set it aside. Justice Kola Wale's ruling was on the applications filed by Amechi, Kokwanso, and Ahmed. We'll take a short break and when we return, Court TV News on the R continues. Do stay with us. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. 
things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back to the news. For more news updates, you can reach us on a social media platform on facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. And on Twitter at Court TV News NG. On our YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Court TV Liver Space and the news. The 2015 general elections is less than two months away. While the fervent remains high as all politi political parties have concluded their primaries and set for the pool. The issue of on all stakeholders is the credibility factor and how much of the damage done in previous elections could be corrected before the 2015 pools kicked off. It was against this backdrop that the Lagos state governor Babatunde Fashala took a trip to India and came back convinced that if that country could conduct a free and fair, uh, credible election with its huge population, Nigeria with less number of people could achieve better, if not more. Find out the Indian lesson for Nigeria as demonstrated at the Lagos House Marina in this report presented from our studio. I, the governor of the state, who was elected cannot even vote. Uh, it says a lot about what INEC has really done here. And you see, they went to post the notice there overnight and saying that we should all just go and register. So they just cancelled my polling unit in effect. That was a very upset and angry Fashola at the peak of the ongoing votes and registration exercise. The governor had visited his polling unit to pick up his permanent voter card only to discover, like many other disappointed Nigerians, that his name was not even on the list. That shitty performance by INEC stirred the governor's emotion. Days later, Fashla and company of the Lagos Resident Electoral Commissioner, Adekunle Ogumola, successfully registered for a new voter card. The story did later to change his mindset about the sloppy INEC show. He went to India and returned with his experience. By population, they were six to seven or eight times uh, the headache we should be having and how they were getting on. So, found out, for example, that they did their permanent voter's card issuance every year. And they're planning to do it now every quarter. So, this year, all people who turn 18 from January 2nd, 2014, up to January 1st, 2015, are registered between the month of, I believe, October this year to January 1st, and then the cycle starts. Um, they use government workers. They have standard forms that people can download and you just declare and they send your forms. So in schools, for example, teachers authenticate the students and the forms are sent to the commission. So they don't go through this lockdown that we, we put through us. So the standard rules, very rigorous rules, if you make false declarations, they charge you to court, they convict you, and so on and so forth. But Nigeria is not new to electronics voting machines. A previous experience did not work out and cost the country so much money with the machines yet unaccounted for. So, what is the big deal about this Indian manufactured products? It was in that process that uh, they now showed me this machine. Uh, I found it quite interesting. Uh, some of the things Kumar has not told you perhaps is the cost of the machine. Uh, last I was told it was about 18,000 rupees. Is that correct? 18,000 rupees. Could this Indian magic be the solution to Nigeria's electoral problems? It looks so simple. It looks simple. But when we come to use it, can we use it the way the manufacturers are using it? Somebody can just pick up the 
one of his cells, go into a war room and start voting. Nothing to detect. So we have to be very careful. India had 815 million registered voters voted in its last election, about seven times more than the entire Nigeria's population, and recorded success using the same electronics voting machines. One of the questions on the minds of many at the demonstration is, would the constant hijacking and manipulation of the electoral process not hinder the effectiveness of the Indian wonder? Once uh, this machine is programmed, so it is programmed in our premises, so it is a hard code, so one-time programmable device, so you cannot hijack, or if you anybody hijacks also, you cannot encrypt or decrypt that the code, so or you cannot manipulate the software, whatever already it is written in that voting machine. So it is, I can say, this is a highly secured and highly tamper-proof device. Even though the person who hijacks that, he cannot uh, take out any of the data or he cannot manipulate the data already, whatever the words are there, he cannot manipulate that. Well, this experience is the best teacher. It is only a try of the machines and the 2015 general elections that will convince Nigerians and more importantly, the electoral body to buy into the Indian magic box. Until then, the Fashla's recommendation may well be a one-man's dream, or could this be the APC's idea to curb electoral malpractices? Only a trial will convince all. How much time is really enough in any human endeavor? This question, according to some, is best answered by how much the individual involved manages his time. With regard to Nigeria's political calendar for 2015 general elections, the time between now and February next year, uh, when the first phase of the polls is expected to kick off, is becoming of a debate, especially for candidates who need much time to achieve their campaigns. But how much time is really enough for candidates who successfully navigated primaries for the respective parties ahead of 2015 general elections? Motaya Lok completes the rest of the story. With the rap and presidential primaries as the last stage for all political parties in Nigeria to elect their candidates in-house, the race for the general elections in 2015 remains top on the minds of the nation's politicians. For a politician under the platform of the Social Democratic Party, Shukbo Shonibare, the calendar for the 2015 general elections is fair enough for political parties to comply with and achieve their desired campaign objectives. Not on issues or policies, it's about political power. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game between power brokers and money mongers. And in situations like that, then when there, there's no real abiding principle holding you to be part of a particular party or another, then I suppose the, the stage is set for the kind of scenario that we now have. The political scientists share the same view with Shani Barre. Mwandu Abuchi Okeke says political parties have more than enough time to wrap up all they need to do ahead of the 2015 general election. What I think uh, should bother us is uh, abiding by the electoral rules and then making that the exact person in terms of uh, the uh, various positions that will be uh, contested on that particular day. They also commented on the general attitude of Nigerian politicians and added that there is a lot to change in their disposition towards governance and democratic principles. When they do or die affair, they see have a very high premium on power. Some of them see politics as the easiest way to make money. Hardly do you see people who go into politics because they want to, you know, go and serve. So it's aside from 419 and, uh, you know, maybe oil, the easiest way to make money in Nigeria is politics. So people, politicians, the attitude, the, none of them, the attitude, attitude, attitude to politics has not changed. The characters we now have, being in politics is critical to them. That's, <laughs> that's how they, they earn a living. So since we have abandoned the space to them to manage and pilfer our, our resources, and we all appear to be turning a blind eye to it, then un until we take our own future in our own hands, then that will continue to, to, to happen. The views expressed by the two analysts, notwithstanding, political observers are watching with keen interest our candidates looking ahead of the 2015 general elections will manage their time. Omotayu Alo, Core TV News, Lagos. 
Nigeria is set to obtain a total grant of $667 million from Global Fund to support its effort to contain malaria, HIV and tuberculosis. According to officials of the country coordinating mechanism, the agreement for $320 million meant for malaria will be signed in January next year, while the process for HIV and tuberculosis will be concluded in June. They added that great milestones have been recorded in the last couple of years with continued support from the fund. At least in the last one to two years, uh, given the reforms within the Global Fund itself, of which I'm a board member, given the reforms within the CCM in the last three years, CCM Nigeria, and then given the greater commitment uh, we're able to get from our principal recipients and those other groups called the sub-recipients who actually implement uh, Global Fund programs. Uh, that's much has been achieved in those three areas, those three thematic areas of AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. Once we get any support from Global Fund, it means we met the counterpart uh, funding. Now, the counterpart funding depends on the domestic financing and what the federal government, what the state governments and local governments are putting into. So we spend time to try and capture this data articulate the data and harness the data such a way that we could say that we are meeting the 15% minimum requirement. So any time you hear that Global Fund is releasing funds to Nigeria, it tells you clearly that we've made the counterpart funding. Emerging workers have put the debt to from Thursday between bomb and hag to 32. The officials of the National Emergency Management Agency, Nemen, disclosed this at the end of a rescue operation in the aftermath of the bomb attack. Nemen spokesman of the North Central Zona, Johanna Aldu, added about 47 people also sustained injuries and were receiving treatment. Thursday bombing came exactly one week after security forces discovered and diffused explosives around Larantu market in Jos. Meanwhile, United States has described the latest bombing in Kano and Jos as senseless attacks on innocent people. The Jos bombing killed scores of people and injured several others barely 24 hours after two female suicide bombers struck a textile market in Kano State. The U.S. says in a statement posted on its website of its diplomatic mission in Nigeria that it was saddened by the loss of lives. The Americans, whom the Nigerian authorities claim had not shown enough support for the war against insurgency, however, added that they remain committed to supporting Nigeria in a struggle to stop the Boko Haram and associated terrorist groups. And over to infrastructure, the federal government says the east-west road linking Wari in Delta State with Oron in Akwaibon State will be completed by the first quarter of 2015. Niger Delta Minister Stephen Oru says the project, initially scheduled for completion in December 2013, had to be shifted to 2015 because of inadequate funding. Oru made the comment while briefing journalists on the activities of the ministry at the National Press Center Abuja on Friday. He said the ministry had achieved 81.3% completion of 338-kilometer road. The minister disclosed that the Federal Executive Council added a fifth section to the road initially divided into four sections to cover Oron to Calabar. He said the additional sections expected to ease transportation from Oron to Calabar would be partly funded with a loan from the China Exim Bank. And that's it on the news on the R. Do join us at the top of the hour for more news updates. I am Sabena Isoku and thank you very much indeed for watching.